So with Super Bowl coming, making one of my favorite things, my, the cheese sauce. It's not even my sauce. Uh, I got this recipe from Hot for Food, but uh, it's a favorite in the house. Winds up tasting like that old crappy Frito cheese in the can, the jalapeno cheddar Frito cheese that's in the can. Um, so we're making, I was gonna make just the vegan nacho cheese dip that's great for chips like Tostitos or Fritos or whatever. Like I said, it tastes just like that uh, Fritos jalapeno cheddar cheese sauce that comes in that can that's in the chip aisle. That gross, disgusting, superly overly processed crap. Um, while doing that, I happened to notice that I had a bunch of cauliflower left over, so I'm gonna make a quick couple of little, uh, I don't know if they're cauliflower wings, more like cauliflower bites. I'm gonna make those, and I'm gonna make the cheese sauce because people have always asked me about this cheese sauce as they see me make it online, and there was a discussion online just yesterday about cauliflower wings, and these are baked, not fried. You can fry them if that's really what you wanna do. We're gonna bake them in the oven. Um, I've never really tried this specific recipe. I'm gonna try it out today. Um, again, you can convert pretty much any non-vegan recipe to a vegan one if that's what you wanna do. Um, that's what we do. Uh, instead of egg for the batter, we're using a flax egg. We're gonna look at how to make a flax egg because that's one of the big questions I always get from people. You know, what do I do for eggs when I'm baking? And there's all different answers to that. Bob's Red Mill makes a egg substitute. Neat Egg makes an egg substitute. You can use flaxseed, you can use aquafaba. There's like all different things you can do. Um, takes a little experimenting and time to figure out work, what works best for what recipes. So we're gonna do that. Uh, I'm gonna start with getting the cauliflower bites ready. And then once that is in the oven and baking, because it takes about 25 minutes, I'll jump into the cheese sauce. I will say with the cheese sauce, it's best if you use it like right after you make it. So get everything going, everything set up. I'll show you how I do that. And then bam, boil the veggies and then get it going. It's a potato carrot base with some other stuff to thicken it up and make it all cheesy sauce. And of course, no recipe's complete without the nooch. So I'm gonna tidy up here a little bit, get everything ready to make the cauliflower bites, and then I'll be right back. All right, so flaxseed egg, you grind up some flax seeds. Uh, it really doesn't matter. You want enough flaxseed that you'll have one tablespoon of ground flaxseed. I caution against buying pre-ground flaxseed because once the flax seeds are ground, they start to kind of degrade and some of the nutrients that you get from the flaxseed aren't as effective and it's not as good, it's like boiling your vegetables. You know, you wash some of those nice good vitamins and stuff that are inside the vegetables out. Now, we happen to have the Nutribullet with the milling blade, so we use this to take whole flax seeds and ground them up into ground flax seed powder. So we're gonna put this on here, it's gonna get really loud. All right, so there's our ground flax seed inside there. And the mixture is one tablespoon of ground flaxseed for three tablespoons of water in replacement of a single egg. So I've got my half a tablespoon here, so I'm gonna take one tablespoon of the ground flaxseed. Okay, cool. Um, so again, we're gonna pour three tablespoons. This is the ground up flax seed. We pour three tablespoons of water in there with that. And you wanna let it sit. You wanna mix it up, you wanna let it sit. I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. And as it sits for a while, it'll start to gel up and thicken. All right, so we've got two separate bowls here. This is gonna be our flour mix and this is going to be our breadcrumb mix. So, to start, I'm gonna season up our flour mix and all we're gonna put in there is, now I'm kind of having the original recipe because I don't have a lot of cauliflower, we just had some left over. So normally I'd have a, let's see, I'd have one cup of flour, but now I've got a half a cup. 
I'd have one tablespoon of cornstarch. And again, this is to thicken this up a little bit, the cornstarch. Uh, I'd have one teaspoon of baking powder. That's gonna kind of make it fluff up a little bit there. But I'm gonna use a half a teaspoon because we're having everything. Half a teaspoon of baking powder. A little bit of salt in there. Some salt. Uh, some fresh ground pepper. Let me get my pepper mill. Boom, 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 boom. So that's it for that. And actually, since these are beer battered, I'm missing one thing. And that is my beer. So let me go get myself my beer. All right, so now our breadcrumb mixture. Um, you can use any old breadcrumbs you want. I'm using a panko breadcrumb just because it's the breadcrumb I have on hand here. Sometimes when we have bread in the house and we make bread, we make our own breadcrumbs. So I'm gonna put three quarters of a cup of breadcrumbs in here. Three quarters of a cup of breadcrumb. And I'm gonna season the three quarters of breadcrumb up with some chili powder, a quarter teaspoon of chili powder in there. I'm gonna throw some paprika in there with it. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of paprika in there. Amazingly, it looks just like chili powder. And then some fresh ground pepper in that too. Just to season this up a little bit. Um, you can throw fresh chopped parsley. I'm gonna throw a little bit of this parsley I have on hand. Uh, three tablespoons or a couple of tablespoons or as much as you actually want in there. Do, 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 do. Throw a little bit of parsley. Mix that up. See how it looks. Looks pretty good. Now, I'm a big fan of baking on a baking sheet with parchment paper, again, because it keeps things from sticking. So, right now, I'm gonna get my baking sheet with some parchment paper ready. Now this is set, I'm gonna finish mixing my ingredients. Right now, we're preheating our oven to 450 degrees. Um, it should be preheated by the time we're done mixing all this and dredging our broccoli, our cauliflower. Um, now, usually you're going to cut your cauliflower florets. They'll start looking like this. I like to cut them. Normally, if I'm making cauliflower wings, I would cut them to look like wings and go, oh, let me cut it down the middle like this. And then cut it down the middle like this so that it resembles a traditional wing but today I'm not really going for the wing look I'm kind of going for more of a nugget or popcorn cauliflower look so I'm gonna cut these like in those shapes cut more of the stem off and then have these okay I'm gonna finish cutting all the rest of these up and have them ready to go to be dipped into our batter all right, so our flax egg has been sitting for a little while. It's starting to gel up a little bit here. I don't know if you can see that. It's starting to gel up and turn all gooey. That's the flax seed, almost like chia seeds do. Now, this is a beer batter recipe, so it requires normally a full cup of beer, half a cup of beer, this one. So I'm going to pour my half a cup of beer in here. No oh, goodness gracious, whatever will I do with the rest of this beer? Ah, I guess I'm going to have to drink it. So I'm pour that in there. And now in with that and mix my gooey little flax eggy in here. That's gonna help thicken it up. And I'm gonna mix all this up.
Okay, now that my batter is nice and mixed up here, as you see, I got my wet batter, my dry mix. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little piece of cauliflower, some are bigger, some are smaller. What a neat little idea to do with some of these is, you know, I'm gonna dip them in here, and then I'm gonna coat them in that, and I'm just gonna lay them on here. Now when these are done, what you can actually do with them is just eat them with your favorite sauce, top them with a hot sauce if you want, or you can uh, get yourself some soft taco shells and make tacos out of these. They make great little tacos. Now I'm gonna continue to dip these and then dredge them in here, and when it's all done, I'll be back before we put them in the oven. Okay, so it was necessary for us to make more of the dry breadcrumb mix. We had plenty of the wet mix to coat these. We are gonna put these in the oven, and then while these are in the oven, be about 20 to 25 minutes, um, while these are in your oven, we're gonna get working on the cheese sauce, which should put them both done around the exact same time. So I'm gonna to toss these in the oven, start working on the cheese sauce. Okay, so now with our cheese sauce, just running through the ingredients here. We've got some potatoes, we need a cup of potatoes, some carrots, we need a half a cup of carrots, peeled and chopped up. We're gonna go through that process. Got tomato paste, some jalapeno pepper slices and their pickling juice. We've got some lemon for lemon juice. We've got our nooch. We've got garlic powder. We've got onion powder. Um, and we've got, I use safflower oil. Uh, from what I understand, the safflower oil leads to a better taste. It doesn't give you that like weird bitter taste. It's not a frying oil really. It's more of what we're using it for. We're not using a lot of that. We've also got, which is not out, it's still in the fridge right now, is our almond milk is gonna go in this. And then we've got some arrowroot powder to thicken this up so that it's kind of creamy like a cheese sauce would be. Now, if you don't have arrowroot powder, you can use tapioca starch. It's really any kind of starch powder. I've never used cornstarch for it, but I'd imagine you can. I just, we have arrowroot powder, we have tapioca starch, and we have all that on hand. So I'm gonna start peeling the potatoes Peeling the carrots. No. All right, so. Just measuring out the one cup of potatoes. Bye bye, carrot. We need a half a cup of carrot, perfectly. Now I leave them in the water. I put these in the water because while my water is boiling to cook these in, when left out, as I'm sure you've noticed if you've ever cooked them before, potatoes start to turn brown. Leaving them in the water like this will help keep them from turning brown and help get some of the starchiness out. Now that I've got that, I'm gonna start mixing everything into my Ninja all my different ingredients. Now, quarter cup of safflower oil. And again, this is not my recipe. This is a recipe I got from Lauren Toyota's Hot for Food, and you can actually buy her cookbook. This recipe's in that cookbook. I need a quarter cup of 
almond milk. I'm prepping all of this. The water is boiling. We got about eight more minutes or so left on those cauliflower. All right, so we need two teaspoons of lemon juice. Our water is boiling, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drain out these and drop them in the pot. Like I said, we're gonna put these in here and we're gonna boil them for about 10 minutes until they're nice and soft. 10 minutes should be enough. We'll let that go. We'll set a timer. Alexa, set a timer for 10 minutes. Our potatoes and carrots are in the pot. So now we need to throw in our, our teaspoon of onion powder, our teaspoon of garlic powder, our one, two, three, four. I'm gonna go with five. There's one tablespoon, two tablespoons, and I'm gonna go with two and a half. I'm putting one teaspoon of the arrowroot powder in there. So here's my arrowroot powder. Okay, so a tablespoon of nutritional yeast, one, two half tablespoons makes a whole tablespoon. And one tablespoon of tomato paste. Boop. Now that's all set. What we're gonna do is we're gonna let this sit here and wait for us to be ready with our vegetables that are cooking, the, uh, cooking on the pot. That um, sound, if you can hear or not, that means Alexa is telling us that our potatoes are done. So again, one of the reasons I love a gas stove, the second you turn off the gas, the heat is gone. I am gonna take these, pour them. Okay, Alexa, stop. I'm gonna take these, I'm gonna pour them through a little strainer just to get the water out. Be careful not to burn yourself. Now, I don't suggest trying to do this with your hands or trying to dump them in there. Get yourself a nice spoon. Nice little slotted spoon. And scoop them into the cup with all the other stuff. Scoop this in here with that. Look at that steam coming off of it. All right, now that this is all in here, I'm taking the bottom blender part of my Ninja screw it on there. I'm gonna put it on my Ninja Blender and blend it till it looks all nice and smooth. All right, let's take our cauliflowers out. There's our little cauliflowers. Look pretty good, nice and crunchy and firm. Mmm. That's yummy. You know, you know what that would go good with? A nice po' boy sandwich. All right, we're gonna let those sit for a minute and figure out what to do with those. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take a couple of these, I'm gonna take a couple of these cauliflower bites. I'm just gonna drop them in this bowl real quick. And since we're trying not to be super fatty, we're not making our own little hot sauce with um, butter and other things, I'm just gonna sprinkle a little Frank's hot sauce. If you're partial to sriracha, you can use your sriracha in there. Me, I'm throwing a little bit of Frank's. Can't go wrong with a little Frank's hot sauce. All right, now our cheese sauce is ready. So let me grab that cheese sauce. Here's what our cheese sauce looks like. You can see it's got that nice cheese sauce look to it. Can you see that one? And as you can promptly see, Done. You can't smell it, but as I pour it out, and let me tell you, mm, that's good. Cleanse the palate with some ah, arrogant bastard. And we've got our cauliflower bites. This is a little, some of the ones that I tossed up with some Frank's hot sauce, dip it in a little day of blue cheese dressing and Oh, that's good. All right, well, time to eat. Till next time, this is Our Crappy Kitchen.